Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion on Mothering Sunday from St Mary Sanderstead in South Croydon. If you're watching for the first time, we also have services of morning and evening prayer at 10am and 8pm daily. If you have any prayer requests that you would like included in any of our services, please do send them to us via our website, the link of which will appear on your screen. Writing to Timothy from prison, St Paul says these words. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David, for that is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. My friends, the church, while restricted, is not bound, and our voice is not silenced. The gospel we proclaim is a wondrous story of freedom, of healing, and of joy. And so as we come into God's presence on this Sunday morning, let us remember all that he has done, is doing, and will do. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. So let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion and mercy, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the collect for this Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow, we may know the power of your presence, to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And so our first reading this morning is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king amongst his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. 
The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sacrificed Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked to Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains the, the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and he brought David in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. Our second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 8. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. So live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleep awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if a man was going on a journey when he summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to their ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five came forward, bringing five more, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were harsh, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter. 
So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy servant! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow, and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bank, and on my return I would have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I don't know if there is any truth to this story or not, but it's said that Britain faced a critical shortage of silver during World War II, and so Winston Churchill launched a search of possible sources. It was found that the, throughout the country were many silver statues of saints in churches and cathedrals, and when Churchill was made aware of this, he said, well, it's time to put those saints into circulation. What a wonderful quote for the church in these difficult times. It is Mothering Sunday today, a day when we think of our mums, people who we value immensely, a day when we thank God for them and for all they have done for us. But it strikes me that on this day more than ever, we need to make the most of what we have been given. As a vicar, I take funerals and I always arrive early. In doing so, I ring my mum. And so whenever I ring my mum, the first thing that she asks is, are you taking a funeral? As I wait to take that funeral, I often walk around the cemetery looking at the graves of those who in many respects have been gone for a long time. And what I wonder is what were their loves, their passions, their dreams, their regrets? And what, if they were able to speak now, would they say? I'm sure it certainly wouldn't be, I wish I'd worked more hours, or I wish I'd got more stuff. It would surely be, I wish I had made the most of what I had when I had it. As I look at those graves of those who have died, what I see is a dash, a line between the day they were born and the day they died. All of us, of course, have that first date in front of us, and one day, a day not known to each of us, we will have the second. One of, if not my favourite film of all time, is The Christmas Carol. How Scrooge is taken by three spirits to look at his past, his present and his future. As we all know, the last makes him look upon his own grave. The image of his name carved upon a stone sends fear right through him. And all of a sudden his life takes on a new meaning. Everything he has lived for, everything he has done is suddenly meaningless and he begs for a chance to make it right. All of us have all of a sudden been thrust into a situation where we have to take stock of what's important. And surely on this day, above all, it is to love those most closest to us. With the date on our left clearly marked as a celebration, where we blow out candles, get presents and celebrate, the date on the right, however, we push away. None of us likes that thought, and we would do almost anything to extend it but we can't change either of those dates. But what we can change is the dash. In the New Testament book of James, we read, why you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. The writer of the Psalms also says, my days disappear like smoke, for we are like a breath of air, our days like a passing shadow. And in the book of Job, we read, my days run out quicker than the thread of a fast-moving needle. We would, I'm sure, all agree that life is unspeakably precious and short, where the needle of our lives moves faster and faster, and we don't know when our time on earth will be up. It could be decades. It could be weeks. Only God knows. So why am I being so morbid, especially on this day, when we celebrate something so wonderful, our mums? Well, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus tells us the parable of a man going on a journey who has left his property in the hands of his servants, where each is given different amounts. Jesus is the man, and we the servants. And what Jesus wants his hearers to see is how prepared are we, and what are we doing with our dash. 
In biblical times, wealthy landowners often entrusted their property to trustworthy servants. And in today's money, he distributed almost two million pounds. And so the original hearers of this story would have been shocked at the amount the landowner had entrusted to them. In reality, Jesus was revealing the enormity of the value that has been entrusted to us, his servants. In the parable, each is given differing amounts, and I think that we can all identify with the fact that some have more than others. Not all of us have the same degree of gifts, talents, or even opportunities. And yet, while we can accept that, it is hard to understand why. What becomes problematic in this story, though, is the response of the landowner upon his return. The one to whom is given the least, and who in his anxiety hides his gift, is given the most severe of judgment. The story then switches to the second coming of Jesus, where he is accompanied with his angels and where he sits upon his throne. It's the moment when all have used up their dash and when each is asked to give an account for what they have done. Today's gospel reading reveals that one day there will be a levelling, that all of us will be called to give an account for the life that we have been given, the choices that we have made, that life is of such immense value that to just bury it brings severe consequences. While we might be tempted to worry about what we haven't done, the emphasis ought, I think, to be not to reflect back on what might have been, but on what we can still do. Not all of us are given the same gifts or the same opportunities, but all of us can be productive in our own unique way. In the film Click, Adam Sander plays the part of Michael Newman, who is a hard-working man wanting to advance in his career for his wife and his children, but he finds it really hard to balance the two. One night, he becomes really frustrated when the television remote breaks, and so he heads out to find a new universal remote, winding up in a store called Bed, Bath and Beyond. There he meets an inventor who gives him a remote so powerful it allows him to fast forward, rewind and pause the events of his life. What happens as the film goes on is that Michael discovers he can fast forward his life to his promotion. But what escapes him is an entire year. And before he realises, the remote has taken a life of its own, fast forwarding his whole life with tragic consequences. I have been immensely privileged to sit by the bedsides of many who are at the end of their dash. And while some have said they are content to move on, I have, in the eyes and voice of others, heard regret of wasted opportunities and fast-forwarded lives. I guarantee that if you knew you only had one month to live, the way that you would spend those next 30 days would be radically transformed, as was Scrooge's. But here is the multi-million dollar question. Why do we wait until we're diagnosed with an illness, confronted with an epidemic, or lose a loved one until we embrace the gift of making the most of what we have. Many people, of course, spend their lives doing precious, amazing and valuable things. But Jesus' parable is there this morning as a reminder of what so can easily be forgotten. We can all choose how we spend our dash, how we value those we love and how we spend our lives on others. Will we use it for ourselves? Will we treasure those we love beyond measure while they are still with us? Will we share our lives and resources more within our community? We might, of course, ask in the context of church this morning, what did Jesus do when he knew he only had a month to live? The answer is he did what he always did. He lived the same as he always lived. Jesus didn't change a thing because he spent his whole dash living passionately, loving completely, and learning humbly, and at the end, leaving triumphantly. If we live our lives as Jesus did, then we will truly learn to live our dash, rather than dashing to live. In St Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, We are no longer our own. We were bought at a price, therefore... Let us honour God with our bodies. There is a universal tendency to compare what we have with others and wish that we had what they do. I think we may have all wished that we were either thinner, 
richer, better looking, had more hair, had the house or car of our neighbour, or maybe even to sing like someone on The Voice. But if we spend our lives wishing for what someone else has, we may just miss out on the life that we have been given. At the end of the day, God will not ask us why we didn't live someone else's life, invest in someone else's gifts, or take up the opportunities that someone else has been given. What will be asked is what did you do for the people you knew, the family that you were born into, the gifts and resources that you were given? Life matters. Our dash matters so much. Imagine you are in your own Christmas carol, and you are there with the last of the spirits where you're led into a room where there are two chairs, one for you and the other for God. In front of you is a DVD player, and on the DVD is the title, What Might Have Been. Imagine watching all that God wanted to do in and through you, if only you had let him. Imagine seeing all the lives that you might have touched, the hopeless situations that you might have changed. Imagine seeing what you might have done, if only you had given Christ the opportunity to use you. Our lives matter. And so as we worship this morning, thanking God for our mums and those who have been a mum to us, the life that they have given and the love that we want to give them back in return, let us also remember that our dash is not yet complete, that in this time of crisis, we can truly make a difference. And so let me leave you with this thought. How will you make the most of what you have been given? Amen. So we say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Today's intercessions have been written by Michael. Our response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Holy God, today on Mothering Sunday, we give you joyful thanks for our mothers. We remember the love and care they surrounded us with during our childhood, the guidance they gave us as we grew older, and the support that they gave us as we entered adulthood and the continued selfless love that they have given us throughout our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to our mothers for bringing us into the world. We thank them for their care and concern for us, for the joys they have shared with us, for the pains they have borne for us, and for all that they have given to us. We also thank them for the role they played in introducing us to you, and to your Son, Jesus Christ, through bedtime prayers and stories, and in the way they serve you, giving us an example of Christian life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you travelled through towns and villages, curing diseases and illnesses. At your command, the sick were made well. We pray that you will come to our aid now, in the midst of this global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. We ask that you heal those who are sick with the virus, and that they regain their strength and health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that you will heal us from our fear and also heal us from our pride, which can make us claim vulnerability to a disease that no one borders. Lord Jesus, healer of all, we pray that you will stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray that you will be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who have died, and as they grieve, we pray that you will defend them from despair, and that they may know your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray and give thanks for all doctors, nurses, researchers, and other medical professionals who seek to heal and help those afflicted by the virus and who put themselves at risk in this process. May they know your protection and peace. Despite the uncertainty of the current situation, we also pause to give you thanks for the beautiful world that you had given us. We marvel at its richness and complexity, and we give you thanks for our senses which enable us to enjoy its splendor. We give you thanks for the differing seasons, the sight and scent of flowers, the sound of bird song, and for all other plants and creatures we live alongside. We pray that you will help us to maintain an awareness of the needs of our planet, and that we are sensitive to the conservation of its resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for your many miracles of healing, and we pray for all who work with the sick and infirm. And in this moment of quietness, we name in our hearts those we love who are in need of your healing touch. We pray that your blessing would be upon them, and that those who love and care for them may find encouragement and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we remember those who we love but see no longer. Almighty Father, we ask that you will be with all those who are grieving today over the loss of a loved one. And we remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. Merciful Father, accept these prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because he was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to no longer live for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. So we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and to ache up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.